See the new Andy Griffith Show each week over most of these stations. Consult local listings. Hey, Guess what I am? Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> oh, you're that Perkin jar of Instant Maxwell House coffee. It's a good thing, too, because it's time to tell the folks about Instant Maxwell House and why it's so good. Instant Maxwell House is real perk coffee in a jar. That's why you get that real perk flavor in your cup. Mmm. You'll like it. So remember... The Andy Griffith Show. Starring Andy Griffith. With Ronnie Howard. Also starring Don Knotts. Brought to you by... Oats. The cereal that starts your day a little bit better. Oats. Sit calm, all ye faithful. A Christmas podcast special where I discuss 25 Christmas sitcom episodes. Please come and listen every day until Christmas. I'm sure we'll feature Fonzie, the Brady's, and Steve Urkel, Dunder Mifflin, Mayberry, and definitely Alf. We'll definitely talk about Alf. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crying. I was just chopping onions for breakfast b- a burrito. Oh. Well, welcome everybody to day eight of sitcom All Ye Faithful. Um, along the, 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 the road so far in December, I, I've gotten out ahead of things, uh, but not today. Today is December 8th. And this is the eighth episode of, of our 25-day adventure. So uh, I'm caught up, but I have to tell you, I have the day off from work today. And uh, I'm going to do a little more watching, so I'm going to try to get a little more caught up on some things. But that's not important today. I don't want to give away the magic of how this podcast is constructed. Today, I want to talk about the Andy Griffith Show. Uh, this this is a show that is just I've always known. I've known about Andy Griffith. I've known about Barney Fife. I've known about Mayberry and Opie and the theme song Aunt Aunt May, right? Is Aunt B or Aunt May? Aunt May is Spider Man. Aunt B. I don't remember. I'm already that bad. Um, but you know, being a child of the '80s, I, I never found myself watching this show. I'm sure it was on in reruns, but it was never one that, that um, you know, caught me in like, oh, I know all about it. I know peripherally about this show. Um, and I know that Al Bundy once met the man who met the man who met Andy Griffith, I believe, was, was the correct connection. And Andy Griffith, I also know, is Matlock. And, you know, he, he's, you know, he's been around just... He's like an American entertainment icon, you know, music, TV, um, forever. But the Andrew Griffith Show, as actually sitting down and watching it, I never really did. So today, this morning, with my breakfast, I watched from season one of the Andrew Griffith Show, 
The Christmas Story. Now, I saw it somewhere else written as A Christmas Story, somewhere with Christmas Story, but it's The Christmas Story. And this episode actually is the first one of the year to get me to tear up a little bit. Um, so, you know, it's it's 1960. It's Mayberry. I mean, it is like the, the podunk... Is that a right? Is that a derogatory term? I don't even know. Uh, like Southern, you know, like old fashioned. Hey, guys, you know, uh, everything's just fine. Like, I didn't realize how Southern Andy Griffith is. Like, he's reckoning and reckoning constantly. I reckon this, I reckon that. Well, who do uh, And, you know, he's a, he's a, he's the sheriff. He runs the prison with his deputy, Barney Fife. Uh, they're, they're opening Christmas cards. People send Christmas cards to the sheriff's department, including prisoners. They're like, oh, look, the, these brothers that we've known before. Oh, look, where are they now? Oh, they're upstate. Uh, and they sent a Christmas card of them. Oh, last year the Christmas card was outside. Oh, they were doing highway duty. So they're getting Christmas cards from former prisoners. Uh, and Barney got a Christmas card sent to him from his sweetheart. Uh, but she, they sent it to the jail, to the prison, to the sheriff's office, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think it's the courthouse, the justice of the peace, the jail, everything. Um, because again, Mayberry is a tiny town from my understanding. Uh, and, but he gets his, from his, from his girlfriend and said, and instead of sending it to his house or apartment, he sends it to the, to the prison, to the, to his work. Uh, and it said to Barney, what is it? Barney, Barney Poo is what he called her. Uh, what she called him in the card, and, and Andy was having some good laughs with that. Um, so they get a phone call. Andy gets a phone call, all excited for Christmas, all excited to have a big uh, Christmas Eve celebration, and um, or Christmas Day. I don't even remember if it's Christmas Eve. I think it's Christmas Eve. Uh, and he's like, I don't want to play Santa this year. I did Santa last year. And he's like, Barney? And Barney looks over at him. He's like, well, I guess we could tell Opie that Santa went on a diet. And Barney's like, I can't. You have these prisoners here. Someone's got to watch them during during uh, during Christmas. I've got to be here. And Andy's like, "Well, isn't a prison, isn't a jail supposed to be like a teaching, uh, uh, you know, situation where we teach them to be better?" Yes. And wouldn't that make us kind of like teachers? Yes. And this kind of like a school. Sure. Well, don't schools have off for Christmas? Yes, I reckon they do. So come on. So he goes and opens up the jail cells. He's like, now listen, fellas, I'm going to give you Christmas off, but you need to come back to the jail after Christmas. Or otherwise, this truant officer here, Barney, is going to is going to hunt you down. He's going to come get you and you're going to be spending more time here in prison. He's like, all right, Sheriff. I understand, Sheriff. That's fine, Sheriff. Like they were in for petty things. Um and I guess it's like it was funny that they're actually letting the the prisoners out of jail, but at the same time, it feels like it's such a small town that he knows these guys, and it's like I'll go to your house. Where where else are you going to go? You're not going to go hide someplace. I'm going to get you. You're going to come back. So he really believes in the honor system, and um, the fact is that we don't know what happens with those guys. We just assume they come back because why wouldn't they? So. They're like, this is great. Now, now, Barney, you can come over. You can be Santa. You can spend Christmas with us. And then comes in old Ben Weaver. Um, this guy, this guy, I looked it up. He was in three episodes of um, of the Andy Griffith show. This was the first one. Then uh, two more in, up until 1962. He passed away in 1962. The guy was born in the 1800s. That's how old, like, this you know, this show, the old people in these old shows are in the, from the 18 freaking hundreds. They're like, oh, my God, a moving picture. They're seeing these things for the first time. So this guy is like, I found this guy, Moonshine, and I have the evidence, and I want to turn him in. And, and he's like, come on, it's Christmas. He's like, I don't care. That's the law. I, I'm, a, I'm a liquor salesman, and these Moonshiners are cutting into my business. He's like, I didn't mean to sell it. I'm just having it for, for my family. That's, it's still illegal. And I'm pressing charges, and you need to keep him here. Otherwise, I don't know why he's turning into Foghorn Leghorn. Otherwise, I don't even know if he had that much of a, of a southern accent. It seemed like some of them did, but Andy, big time. But everyone's going to have one when I re recount things. So he's like, I'm going to, if you don't, I'm going to check in on the prison. And if you don't keep him here, I'm going to go upstate to the state legislature. And I'm going to make sure they hear that you're not doing your, your derelict of your duties. And you're going to have, you're going to hear from them and it's going to cause you mighty troubles. So Andy's like, oh, 
God damn it. He didn't say that. <laughs> but I, I think he felt it. <laughs> and then he's like, uh, Barney, uh, where um, we sorry, man. You got to stay. I'm still going to go with my family, but you got to stay at the prison. There's nothing we can do. He's like, really? Yep. He goes, he goes, you know, uh, he's got to stay here for Christmas. And then Andy's like, wait a second. So then he drives, he leaves, goes and gets this guy's wife and kids, brings them back to the prison. And this, the guy, old guy has kind of been watching from the outside. He's like, what you doing here? I am there. Yeah, I don't know why he sounds like a, an old fashioned lawyer now. Uh, and he's like, now you see here. You told me I could that he had to stay in jail, and he did. But I'd be derelict of my duty if these people weren't also accessories to the crime. Did you know your daddy was moonshining? Yeah, yes. Did you know your husband was moonshining? Yeah, yes. Uh, okay, well, then three of them, I got to lock them up. Derelicted, you know, otherwise I'd be derelict of my duty. And he's like, oh, Sheriff, I know what you're doing here, and I don't like it. And then all of a sudden, you start seeing people showing up. And uh, Aunt, Aunt B showing up with a with a turkey and the Andy's girlfriend. I guess I think this girl's Andy's girlfriend. I don't think he's it's Andy's wife or Opie's mom. She did get a little kiss on the cheek. Uh, she brings in. They're bringing in trees and Andy's and Opie's there, and they're bringing in all kinds of like uh, decorations. And this guy's like, oh, "What's going on here?" Well, see, we're gonna you know we're just having a little celebration here. So. The guy leaves. Then later, you see him trying to steal a bench, and he's like, "What do you What do you do in there, Ben?" He's like, "Well, I want to take this bench. It's public property. I'm going to put it in front of my shop." He's like, "I can't let you do that. That's part of the courthouse. I'm going to have to arrest you." He's like, "Fine, arrest me." And Andy's like, "Ah, I can't do it. It's Christmas. You go on, have the bench. Merry Christmas." He's like, "Huh?" Then you see the old guy parking in front of a hydrant. Now you realize what he's doing. He watched all these people. Having this night, it's starting to have this nice Christmas, and he's realizing, Oh my god, I'm gonna miss out on this. I want to get myself arrested. I don't want to admit that I want to be here with these people. I want to get myself arrested. Apparently, maybe he's just all alone. So he tries to get uh po- pulled over, and uh, Barney pulls him in. He's like, He tore a ticket up in front of me, and that doesn't sound like Barney. And uh, and he's like, Well, I'm just gonna have to write him another ticket. Uh, and then he says, Um, it's, you know, uh, oh, he goes, it's only a $2 uh, fine or it's two days in prison. And the old guy's like, well, I better spend two days in prison then. He's like, okay. And then the girlfriend comes up and goes, I'll pay the fine. It's Christmas. Oh, don't you do that. I didn't ask you. That's Christmas. So he's like, oh, and he leaves. Then we cut to them all in, enjoying Christmas. And Andy and, and Barney comes out as, as, as Santa Claus. He doesn't even put the beard over his face. So it's like, how could you not know it's him for the kids? And then um, we see uh, uh, Andy pull out his guitar, and he and the girlfriend start singing um, uh, um, Away in a Manger, I think. Uh, Yeah, Away in a Manger. And I'm thinking, was Andy a country music star before he was a TV star? I don't know. It makes me seem like maybe, you know, when you see the show, it's called The Andy Griffith Show. I know him from that, but was he already known? Was he a musician? Was he a performer? I'm going to guess yes. I don't know. I should look that up. I'm not going to. Um, so we see that everyone kind of enjoying things um, and they're singing away in a major. And then the camera pans over and we see in the window of the um, of the uh, the prison, hold, like peering into the window, we see the old guy and he's singing along. And I was like, oh, my God, he just wants to be with them. And then he slips and he falls and, and Andy's like, what's going on there? Maybe a uh, maybe a reindeer fell. I say, I say. And so he goes outside to see what the noise is, and he sees the guy there, and he's like, "Ben, what are you doing down there?" Oh, nothing. He goes, um, "Now I can't. You know, why would you be want to be there?" And he's like, "Well, you might want to arrest me for trespassing or something." Now, why would you want to be arrested unless, oh, you want to be arrested? He's like, "No, I don't. I, no, I don't." Then it cuts to. Uh, Andy bringing him in to the jail and they arrested him for, I forget what the hell they said it was. Um, and this guy has, he goes, but because of the law, we let him go to his house and get some things to bring with him. Mind you, these prison cells are beautiful. They have a, they, they have little chairs and they have like, it looks like a couch. I mean, these are, these are really nicely uh, done up 
prison cells. So the guy brings in his luggage and he opens it up. He's like, well, how'd this get in here? He pulls out roller skates, gives them to a kid. He's like, where'd this doll come from? I don't need this. And you realize he brought presents for everyone. He brings a, a, a baseball glove for one of the kids, roller skates for Opie, a doll for the girl, uh, shaving stuff for shaving cream for Andy or for the girl. I don't know. Um, he just he brought gifts for everybody. Some of them was even wrapped. So he took the time to wrap these gifts, too. That's why what took Andy so long. And they're like, come on, come on, get in your prison cell. Here's some eggnog and here's a plate of food. And then um, you realize he just wanted to be with them on Christmas. He, he was alone. He wanted to be with them. And it got me sad. And I'm, whoa, whoa, boy, I'm, I get a little frosty just, just thinking about it. Oh, it gets me. Oh, yeah. Um, and then uh, cut back and, and uh, Andy's like, hey. Uh, you want to take the kids home to the guy who was caught for moonshining? He's like, well, I, I can't. I'm, I shouldn't be here for moonshine. He's like, well, let me check the evidence. Well, it looks like we don't have any evidence. He's like, did you drink it all? I was like, I didn't, but I did leave it in the jail. Anyone could have got it, and I left it in Ben's prison cell. So the liquor salesman drank all the moonshine that he was arresting the guy for in the first place. He's like, you think Ben drank it all? He goes, well, he was feeling down, and maybe he was feeling so down he needed a big pick-me-up. So that's good. That's a good uh, good message. If you're feeling down, Moonshine will pick you up. And it shut. It, it, it pans over to him in bed, and he's sleeping, but he got, then he, all of a sudden this big smile comes on his face like, yes, I'm drunk on Moonshine, and I'm now in the prison cell. And I'm not alone on Christmas. Then he's going to wake up, and the freaking family's gone, and everyone's gone. He's like, oh, no, I'm alone in a prison cell on Christmas Day. What did I do? This was a poor choice for my for my my actions. I have terrible consequences. Because <laughs> I, unless Barney's going to be there, he's like, well, it's just you and me. And he's going to be like, what happened to Andy? And then, um, and then, um, <laughs> um, What's his name? Charles Bronson's going to come in and go, I shot him. Okay, I had to bring it up because that's the classic Simpsons. Um, <laughs> so that's it. The Andy Griffith Show, The Christmas Story, which was a delightful, just like a, I don't know, old-fashioned feeling, old-fashioned classic family Christmas. It, even though it really wasn't much time with the family. Uh, it just felt like, you know, in the 1960s, that this when this came out, my parents were 14 years old, and I could see them watching this with their family. Uh, yeah. And just the, the idea of the guy not being at Christmas. Uh, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting sad. I'm gonna, I need to go watch something goofy. Um, so with that, my friends, I say, I say we did it. I say we achieved, um, peak Christmasness in this episode. Uh, there wasn't any supernatural super Santa showing up, but there was a, a Grinchy Scrooge who had his heart turned pretty quickly. He was like, damn, I want to be part of this. And then, of course, he wakes up the next day and he's in prison. And now Andy's like, now we're going to keep you for, for all the crimes you did. You spend one year in prison here. What? Um, I want my lawyer. Okay, that's it. I'm done. So thank you so much for listening and subscribing. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Geek Mentality. The Facebook page is Fans Not Experts. I don't do a lot there, but it'd be cool if you subscribed anyway. Just click it. You know, uh, like Ron Popeil said about the Showtime Rotisserie Grill, set it and forget it. Just click like and forget about it. Uh, and of course, the website is fansnotexperts.com. That I would love you to go to. You can see this show. You can see all the shows that are done there. Uh, and you could subscribe, all the subscription options are there, uh, and they're all the different, uh, tier levels of membership, all the prices, everything's free. Okay. Everything's free. I'm not going to charge you for this stuff. I'm not going to swear on an Andy Griffith show episode. See what I did there? Very good. So until next time, until tomorrow, my friends, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, sit calm, all ye faithful, may the force be with you, and until tomorrow, here is my theme song. This is my podcast, I made it, Geek Mentality is what I named it, and I think you should listen and subscribe. Cause I'm kind of funny and awesome I think that I'm worth your time And I'm kind of handsome My mom says Please listen and Please subscribe At least listen to this
this episode. Bad non-experts.